Inventing Freedom The Prisoner Who Gave Birth to Lamborghini Everyone knows about the feud between Ferrari and Lamborghini and how this birthed the famous Lamborghini car brand. But many do not know about the short time Ferruccio Lamborghini, the founder of the Lamborghini brand, spent in prison before building two global businesses. Ferruccio Lamborghini had a humble beginning, but through grit, ingenuity, and an understanding of the times, he successfully built multiple enterprises and created one of the world's most revered status symbols. In this video, we will look at how Ferruccio Lamborghini was able to learn engineering, get captured on an island, work for the Allied forces, go on to build a successful tractor business, fail, and then produce one of the best global luxury car brands. Stick with us as we explore what made Ferruccio Lamborghini a successful engineer and businessman and how that can shape how we look at business going forward. It seems like many car inventors had a background in the farm. The likes of Walter Chrysler, Soichiro Honda, and Henry Ford were either born to a family of farmers or had a little bit of farming in their early days, and Ferruccio Lamborghini is not exempt from this elite class of inventors. Ferruccio Lamborghini was born to Antonio and Evelina Lamborghini on the 28th of April 1916 at house number 22 in Renazzo di Cento in the province of Ferrara in the Emilia-Romagna region of northern Italy. He was born into a Catholic home and was baptized Catholic four days after his birth. His parents were farmers. Better put, they were viticulturists. They grew grapes for wine. Ideally, Ferruccio was brought up in the family way and was taught the importance of hard work and esteeming quality above all else. His parents brought him up in the hopes that he would one day continue in the line of wine growers. To their dismay, the young Ferruccio had been captured more by the farming machinery used on his father's farm than actual farming. He had been much more interested in taking the tractor on the farm apart and putting it back together than working on the farm. Car manufacturing was still in its infancy and the technology behind it was pretty fascinating for the young Ferruccio. As fate would have it, he got the opportunity to study mechanics and engineering at the Fratelli Taddea Technical Institute near Bologna. He also got the opportunity to train under a blacksmith where he honed his skills and applied his knowledge. After his training, he wanted to take the opportunity to work for Cavalier Righi, a renowned engineer in Bologna at the time. Righi at the time owned the Harmonious shop, which was contracted to repair and build vehicles for the military. Initially, Ferruccio was turned down, but he persisted. Eventually, Righi, seeing the determination in him, allowed Ferruccio on board. At the age of 18, Ferruccio decided to start a laboratory in Renazzo di Cento along with his best friend Marino Filippini, who was also a student of Righi. They spent a good part of their time experimenting, but this was short-lived as the Second World War began. Ferruccio was invariably drafted into the Italian Royal Force where he served as a mechanic, considering his unique set of skills. He worked in the Italian garrison on the island of Rhodes and he rose in rank, eventually becoming the supervisor of the vehicle maintenance unit. During the war, Germany turned on their Italian allies and this caused a lot of soldiers to flee or get captured. Initially, Ferruccio was able to escape, but he returned in civilian garb and worked odd jobs on the island. With the permission of the Germans, he was able to open a small vehicle shop. The fighting continued and Rhode Island fell to the Allied forces, and Ferruccio was captured, becoming a prisoner of war. During this period, his knowledge of engineering came to his rescue again as the Allied forces put him to work on their vehicles. After a year of working on military vehicles, Ferruccio Lamborghini was released to go home. When he got back to Italy, he went straight to his village and settled down there, opened a garage in Pieva di Cento, and started repairing old war vehicles, modifying other cars, and working on old tractors. At some point during the course of his work, his father approached him. He needed help with making a new tractor to work on his farm, which Ferruccio made. But beyond just making the tractor and moving on, Ferruccio spotted a gap in the Italian market. The war was over and post-war Italy was much more interested in agricultural rejuvenation and industrial revitalization. He knew the market would tilt towards tractor sales and began to position his workshop for that boom. He began building his first tractors using parts from old military vehicle engines and differentials from ARAR centers. He built his first Carioca tractors and they were based on the six-cylinder petrol engines of Morris trucks. 
Considering the price of petrol in Italy, Ferruccio added a feature to his trucks that quickly made them a favorite for farmers. The engines started with petrol fuel and switched to diesel fuel, a much cheaper option. This in itself was cutting edge in the face of an emerging industry. He went further to reduce the size of the tractors, which helped to cut costs while meeting the needs of the farmers. These changes would help grow his future company tremendously. This began Ferruccio's journey into the automotive industry as the Carioca became an immediate hit on the market. He then founded Lamborghini Trattori and began manufacturing tractors. During this period, Ferruccio was building his tractors all by himself, taking weeks to put one tractor together, but they sold really well. So Ferruccio did what any businessman interested in company growth would do. He sought to expand. Ferruccio was not the first tractor manufacturer in Italy, and while he provided more cost-effective options, he was competing in a market that already had big players like Fiat, Trattori, Landini, and Meta Meccanica. So he decided to take a huge risk. He and his father decided to put out the father's farm on loan. Ferruccio obtained a loan from Casa di Risparmio di Cento. He then used the loan to purchase a 1,000 six-cylinder Morris and 3,500 gas power engines. He also hired more laborers and expanded factory space. Then he set to work on a new model, the Tractor L33. The risk paid off big time, and Lamborghini Trattori began to make a profit. In a short amount of time, the company became quite successful. With the success of his business came an inflow of money, and what better way for an engineer to enjoy his wealth than to indulge in something he had always loved, cars. Ferruccio began buying luxury cars, including cars like the Alfa Romeos and Lancias, and at some point he had enough cars to drive a different one each day of the week. He later added a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL and got two Maserati 3500 GTs. His love for cars would eventually lead him to buy a Ferrari 250 GT, a top luxury car of its day. He bought other Ferrari cars, and while he loved them, he had a few complaints. He felt Ferraris were generally too noisy for the road, and they felt like race cars repurposed for luxury purposes, whose interiors were not properly done. He had often taken the cars back to their designer Maranello for rebuilds and refixes, and he was not enjoying the after-sales customer service provided by Ferrari. He eventually decided to bring up his complaints to Enzo Ferrari. He had intended to meet Ferrari as a fellow engineer and brother in the trade, but Enzo, who was well-known, was quite proud and also had a temper problem, and he did not receive the complaints and their prospective solutions quite well. Enzo even went as far as calling Ferruccio the problem and saying that he did not know how to use a Ferrari. At that point, Ferruccio took it upon himself to make the changes himself. He had been able to identify that the clutch used in the Ferrari 250 GT was the same as the ones used in some of his tractors, so it was easy to modify and tinker with. He fixed the issues he had with the clutch and the car was working fine, as it even outperformed stock models of the car. This event invariably led Ferruccio into the car industry. In 1964, he started his automobile company, a branch of the Lamborghini brand named Automobili Lamborghini, and he aimed to build a touring car that would fit his exact specifications. In less than four months after he embarked on his project, the Lamborghini 350 GTV was ready. Well, technically, the body was, but the engine was not ready. Ferruccio had a deadline to meet to present his new car at the 1963 Turin Motor Show. At the exhibition, the car attracted a lot of attention and became a fan favorite quickly. Luckily for Ferruccio, no one ventured to open the hood. In due time, the engine was ready, and by the next year, a new and improved 350 GT powered by a detuned 270 brake horsepower 3.5 liter V12 was ready for the 1964 Geneva Auto Show. The years that followed saw a lot of economic boom for both Ferruccio's tractor and automobile companies. On the path of his cars, the Espada, Islero, Harama, Uraco, and the Countach followed in subsequent years. But as the saying goes, all good things eventually come to an end, and this was the same for Ferruccio. Some occurrences beyond his control caused a huge dent in the company's portfolio, and this eventually spiraled. One was the sudden last-minute cancellation to supply 5,000 tractors to Bolivia. This forced Ferruccio to sell 51% of his stake in his company. Later, the global stock market crashed and an oil embargo was imposed. It raised fuel prices and threw the auto sector into disarray. Ferruccio worked hard to keep his company running and found customers for his unsold tractors. He eventually had to sell his remaining 49% stake in his company and retire early. 
The business was subsequently driven into liquidation. A few years later, the French millionaires Robert and Patrick Mimron purchased it from the Italian government for $3 million. They had to sell the business to Chrysler because of their excessively high cost of capital, despite their ambitions to bring the brand into the U.S. and earn a profit. After that, Chrysler sold the business to the Sedco Group. After taking control, Sedco significantly increased sales. However, they lacked the resources to weather the Asian financial crisis. Audi purchased Lamborghini for $10 million in 1998, and under their management, Lamborghini was able to satisfy the needs of the 21st century. As for Ferruccio, he would fall back into the family business of farming grapes and producing a wine that was known as the blood of the Mura. Ferruccio's sprawling farm, La Fiorita, near Lake Trasimeno, now boasted a cutting-edge winemaking plant capable of producing more than 800,000 bottles of wine yearly. Both the winery and the golf course were available to guests, albeit by appointment only, and the estate also featured a small private museum of the Lamborghini automobiles Ferruccio owned at the time. Ferruccio died on the 20th of February, 1993, after he had suffered a heart attack 15 days earlier. His legacy of car brands survived him, albeit under new ownership. His Lamborghini cars would eventually become a status symbol amongst luxury cars.